Fear no more the heat of the sun or the furious winter's rages. Thou thy worldly task hast done, home art gone and ta'en thy wages. Golden lads and girls all must, as chimney sweepers come to dust. Fear no more the frown of the great, thou art past the tyrant's stroke. Care no more to clothe and eat, to thee the reed is as the oak. The scepter, learning, physic must all follow this and come to dust. Fear no more the lightning flash, nor the all dreaded thunderstone. Fear not slander, censure rash. Thou hast finished joy and moan. All lovers young, all lovers must consign to thee and come to dust. Farewell, thou art too dear for my possessing, and like enough thou knowest thy estimate. The charter of thy worth gives thee releasing, my bonds in thee are all determinate. For how do I hold thee but by thy granting? And for that riches, where is my deserving? The cause of this fair gift in me is wanting, and so my patent back again is swerving. Thyself thou gavest, thy own worth then not knowing, or me to whom thou gavest it, else mistaking. So thy great gift upon misprision growing comes home again on better judgment making. Thus have I had thee as a dream doth flatter, in sleep a king, but waking no such matter. Cupid and my compaspe played at cards for kisses. Cupid paid. He stakes his quiver, bow and arrows, his mother's doves and team of sparrows. Loses them, too. Then down he throws the coral of his lip, the rose growing on his cheek, but none knows how. With these the crystal of his brow, and then the dimple of his chin. All these did my compaspe win. At last he set her both his eyes. She won, and Cupid blind did rise. O oh, love, has she done this to thee? What shall alas become of me? When icicles hang by the wall And Dick the shepherd blows his nail And Tom bears logs into the hall And milk comes frozen home in pail When blood is nipped and ways befoul Then nightly sings the staring owl To woo, to wit, to woo, a merry note while greasy Joan doth keel the pot. When all aloud the wind doth blow, and coughing drowns the parson saw, and birds sit brooding in the snow, and Marion's nose looks red and raw, when roasted crabs hiss in the bowl, then nightly sings the staring owl, to woo, to wit, to woo, a merry note, while greasy Joan doth keel the pot. When to the sessions of sweet silent thought I summon up remembrance of things past, I sigh the lack of many a thing I sought, and with old woes new wail my dear time's waste. Then can I drown an eye unused to flow, for precious friends hid in death's dateless night, and weep afresh love's long since cancelled woe and moan the expense of many a vanished sight. Then can I grieve at grievances foregone, and heavily from woe to woe tell o'er the sad account of four bemoaned moan, which I knew pay as if not paid before. But if the while I think on thee, dear friend, all losses are restored, and sorrow's end. Tired with all these, for restful death I cry, as to behold desert a beggar born, and needing nothing trimmed in jollity, 
and purest faith unhappily forsworn, and gilded honor shamefully misplaced, and maiden virtue rudely strumpeted, and right perfection wrongfully disgraced, and strength by limping sway disabled, and art made tongue-tied by authority, and folly doctor-like controlling skill, and simple truth miscalled simplicity, and captive good attending captain ill. Tired with all these, from these would I be gone, save that to die I leave my love alone. When in the chronicle of wasted time I see descriptions of the fairest whites and beauty making beautiful old rhyme in praise of ladies dead and lovely knights, then in the blazon of sweet beauty's best of hand, of foot, of lip, of eye, of brow, I see their antique pen would have expressed even such a beauty as you master now. So all their praises are but prophecies of this our time, all you prefiguring. And for they looked but with divining eyes, they had not skill enough your worth to sing. For we which now behold these present days have eyes to wonder, but lack tongues to praise.